Welcome guys. <coughs> uh, so in this video, uh, I want to talk about this quantum search algorithm. So it's like a generalization of other applications of the graphs algorithm. So let's talk about problems. Uh, so problem is that if you have capital N is 2 to N where uh, N is an integer and then you, we have a map from uh, F from 0, 1 uh, bit to N to 0, 1. So basically we have the 2 to N thing. And then we map each zero, uh, we map, map each instance to zero or, or one, basically true or false. And then that M may be a subset of this uh, two to N, okay? So such that if X belongs to M is one, if X belongs to M, uh, do not belong to M is zero. So basically X belongs to M is true, as do not belong to M is zero. Task is to count F inverse one, basically the M. So we get, we number is that, uh, the problem is that we need to know the number of M. So idea is that we do not want to know the uh, which m is right. What which what exactly uh, where where this element belongs to m or not. The only thing we need, hope to know is that the number of m. Okay, so classically we need to search everything, right? So you think classically uh, there's no way, no other way you can do it because somehow like you need to know each element in the m, right? Uh, but uh, quantum way that uh, we let me see uh, we can see a proof. Okay, so because the Grover's the idea in the Grover's algorithm is that uh, we first produce the uh, linear superposition, and then we can write this superposition as the these two sums, and the one is a uh, square root of n and beta, one is a square root of n minus n divided by n alpha. So this is beta, this is alpha. Okay, and uh, we are, we can assume that m is uh, somehow small. So some theta divided by two is approximate n this divided by n square root, so theta divided by 2 is uh, square root of m divided by n, so theta is approximately 2 times square root m divided by n. Okay, and then we can create a so-called uh, the Grover's operator. Uh, okay, one type of Grover's operator is that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is a misnotation, I think. Yeah, so basically, uh, let's call u, okay, so uh, let's call u. So u alpha uh, contains this property, u beta you can compute. So u can be viewed as a cosine sine sine minus cosine, and then there's O, right? O is a operator which you act on the uh, non-correct, if you act on the false one, it becomes the same. If you act on the correct one, it becomes minus sign. So combine this uh, u and O, we get this g. So we get cosine cosine sine minus sine in the basis of alpha beta. Okay, so the physical, as so we proved, the, let's quickly review the Grover's algorithm. So the physical uh, idea, oh, sorry, in a mathematical idea is that uh, your original uh, phi is comma alpha and combination of alpha and beta, right? So, and then you try to use a Grover's operator, so basically you rotate theta, right? So after you keep rotating, then the, this, the amplitude, right? Amplitude of the correct one will be amplified, right? So this is the like the mirrors of the quantum computing. Basically, if you you create all the superpositions and you apply some unitaries and hope that unitaries can increase the amplitude uh, between, uh, can increase the amplitude between the correct one. Okay. So it's like you apply gr, so you will change theta, and then you know that uh, after you change r times, uh, sorry, you change k times, then you get k theta. Hope you get equal to pi over two, right? So. That's why uh, you can get uh, so you get the uh, k square root m divided by n two equals pi over two. So merely uh, if in the previous Grover's algorithm, if you only have one answer, then uh, your k needs square root of n right times pi over four. Okay, so this is the previous discussion of Grover's algorithm. Basically, uh, that's it. Okay. So now the idea is that uh, it's a little bit different because uh, what we need to is count how many m, right? Just count how many n, how many n. So we are not, not we are not care about finding the all the m, right? We only we only care about how to find. Okay, so the quantum search algorithm is that uh, we can see this g, right? This g is a rotation operator, so or to uh, basically the to the two D rotate. So this one can view that G is a uh, unitary operator, right? Obvious. And uh, you want to prove that uh, their eigenvalue is exponential plus or minus i theta. So it's theta divided by two square root of n divided by n, right? So if you if you one can use the quantum phase estima estimation, right? Since we already know in the previous lecture, we know that how to do the quantum phase es estimation. So we just pr 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 provide uh, many of the control G gates, right? In the previous, uh, we use the control U gates, right? So but we can we now use the quantum phase operate uh, estimation to act, act on this g, 
and uh, get this theta, right? So we get theta divided by two if we use the quantum uh, equal approximate square root of the div m divided by n. So find theta, we just uh, identically find m. Okay, so uh, let's idea, and uh, so this is the interesting quantum search algorithm, basically. Uh, combine the Grover's algorithm and the phase estimation. So this a little bit is still very interesting. And you only need the square root of n, uh, n times to get the uh, how many m. So it's very interesting. Okay, and uh, yeah, so I uh, I I should say you uh, you can use more control gate to get approximate theta, right? Once you get theta, you take a square root of n divided by n. Okay, so this is like a uh, the most powerful, uh, I think the very powerful result because uh, you, you don't need the square root of, you don't need the n time, right? You just need to keep prepare these robbers. And I think we still need the square root of n times. Okay, and I will see you guys in the next video. Maybe I should provide a proof. I should try to find a proof that the uh, square root of n is basically the optimal of the quantum computing. Okay, and I will see you guys in the next videos. Thanks.